Wirt as a character has so much loaded into her that I don't think I'm going to be able to cover it alone, which is why I bring along my friend Katome. I'm Katome, I'm a merm, and I'm excited to tell you about my people. Right, the thing that a lot of people who don't really play Wirt see him as is just he gives you boosted stats, which, you know, bigger number, better person and all that. Uh, the trading varies in usefulness but it's an option. So when I play Wirt, I almost never trade with him. Like I trade with him for lulls, but I like I trade with him and then I get garbage and I say, what was I hoping for? And the big thing for me, I don't maintain my Merm King usually, unless I'm like going into a boss fight. And the reason is just, it just takes time out of my day. Like, I don't know, you have to feed him. He like has to munch on stuff. And overall, it's just like the bigger number stuff is not really worth it for him. Well, like, with the most recent update, they did make him incredibly low maintenance, which, albeit, low maintenance is still maintenance, right? Yeah, that's true. I guess it's, you know, I, I have I have made Worm King a couple of times since then, and it is better, for sure. But overall, like, I don't, I don't know, the bigger number is, having, having higher stats is nice, but day to day, unless I'm, like, in a boss fight, it's not really such a big deal for me. Like, if I lose 20 health, I'm going to have to heal 20 health. The reason that I do it as often as I do is mostly for the hunger more than anything. I want to top myself off so that I don't have to worry about hunger for the foreseeable future. And a lot of the times, that's how I see Merm King. He's just, I can delay this thing that I'm going to have to do for, like, later. That's true. It is really nice that, like, when Merm King, when Merm King is up, you have a max hunger of 250, which is a full like over three days of hunger and that's pretty nice uh work does have like a lot of ways of dealing with hunger though so i generally just carry around some honey with me or some kelp and uh it doesn't end up being so much of a problem and then uh merms are the next thing that people think of whenever they talk about work uh, merms are really really nice like i tend to have a bunch of them kind of near my base i like to have a big community of merms to to do my bidding for me the main thing i would say i use it for is marble because merms just blast through marble like nobody else. As most other characters, I feel like farming marble is questionable just because of how much of a drain it is in your resources because it takes like a couple 16 or so swings from a from a pickaxe in order to mine a single one. Every time you mine a fully grown marble shrub, it only pays out in a max of like two marble. So you're only doubling it instead of getting, when you cut down a tree, three logs or so, not counting the stumps. Yeah, I did some math. I think it's, I thought it was 10 swings. And based on that, I was trying to do some math. And I think I came out with like, it takes a hundred, if you wanted a hundred marble, it would take you a full day to like mine a hundred marble shrubs. Whereas if you're wort, you can just mine, you just like hire a couple of merms and you can just blast through more than that in a fraction of the time. It's so easy. Yeah, merms make it so much better of an option. It's also really good for like other characters that might need marble. Uh, Winona, you know, for her statues, Walter and Wolfgang, and they could also use it. Yeah, one other thing about marble is I really like it as just armor. So when I'm playing Wirt, I can use marble as my day-to-day -day armor because I just have so much of it. And it's actually easier in my mind to get a whole bunch of it than pigskins. Um, and so I just walk, like I go into the ruins with a stack of marble and I just make marble armor. And like, I guess I get a little bit of a slowdown, but it doesn't matter. I also tend to, it doesn't matter to me. I also tend to tame a beefalo, so it matters less on my beefalo. Um, but I can, like, wear my marble armor if I'm going to go fight McTusk or a bishop or something like that. And then, uh, Wirt can definitely, I guess, uh, like, benefit from marble. Just because, you know, she has 250 max HP. So, being, like, a, a damage sponge, I guess, is, uh, like, for your team. And being able to have the resources to be that damage sponge is really good. Yeah, when people say Wirt is the tankiest, it's like, yeah, and it's not because of the HP, it's because of the marble. The positioning of the Merm House is something that you and I, I think, have differences on. Whenever I'm playing, I'm usually playing in a team, and that's like, when I'm playing Wirt. Whenever you're playing, you you typically base in the swamp, right? Whenever you're playing alone in a Wirt server. If I'm solo, I'm basing in the swamp 100%. Typically, I'm always trying to consider other people. I'm thinking like, oh, well, just in case other people want to join, I gotta account for whatever they want. So having merms that are like about a pig farm away where it's not really an issue if uh, if a monster character is like at base because you know then the the pigs or in this case the merms aren't going to be aggroing onto them all the time and it's not going to be annoying. You know d just gauging the distance is like something that I always try to think of but you know if you're basing alone and like you're you're not 
intending for anybody to join, then definitely beneficial to base in the swamp. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely something that I... So I have built merm farms in like worlds where I'm playing with other people. And what I tend to do is like find a little patch that's kind of near base, but like also kind of surrounded by water, like a little uh, peninsula. And I wall it off and just say, this is my peninsula and it's got merms and you can't come here. And I just turn it all into swamp and put merms there. And sometimes a bunny hutch. Uh, the reason for the bunny hutch, by the way, is one of my favorite benefits of merms, which is just they can do a lot of passive farming, especially if you do not have a merm king, which I usually do not. Merms will just aggro onto stuff. And then you just like, if you just have a bunch of merms around a bunny kind of near base that gets loaded in every once in a while, then every once in a while you just go by and there's a bunch of bunny puffs there and you can like make, you know, automate bee queen or whatever you want to do with your bunny puffs. Um, but you can do similar things with like spiders or pigs and just like passively walk by every once in a while and there's like a bunch of silk or a bunch of pig skins. Specifically, the benefit with uh, merms on, on these things actually is that merms don't eat bunny puffs or pig skins or spider glands or anything like that uh, because they don't eat meat, obviously. Another thing about merms is how snowbally they are in that Wirt just deals with every problem she has when it comes to setting up merms by hiring more merms. So whenever you go into the swamp on like day two or something, you could very easily go in there empty handed. You don't really need food because chances are a merm's going to walk into a tentacle, drop a fish, and then he could use that fish that the merm dropped to hire more merms to go cut down more trees to get you like most of the resources that you need in order to set up a merm town that is not in the swamp. Yeah, I tend to not build my merm how my merm farm right away, but I think that again comes back to like I'm not necessarily using work to gather resources. Um, so my top priority tends to be like lunar or then just general setting up a base. Uh, and usually like probably midway through the year when I actually start looking at into you know building a merm town or maybe even year two. Yeah, I I try setting up merms like as soon as I can just because I'm more resource gathering oriented when it comes to playing work. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I, I do go through the swamp pretty early, but usually that's just, I'm like watching tentacles die. Like for me, at the very least, I want to be able to pre-craft a merm house just to know that I have one. That whenever I do yeah, decide to, uh, to get it set up, then I could just go do it. Moving on to stat management. Her hunger is actually something that either a lot of people say is trivial or a lot of people have issues with. Yeah, I think hunger is really interesting because if you talk about like Wurt's downsides, the first thing people will bring up is food because obviously she's a vegetarian, she doesn't eat meat, and most people just rely on like meatballs and pierogies to get you through the game, which Wurt can't do. But actually, I see hunger as her biggest advantage because she's got like this 33% veggie bonus, so most of the food that she eats is actually counting for 33% more than it does for everybody else. So that already just makes it a lot easier. And the other thing that's really easy with her is kelp. Find the kelp stalks on Lunar Island, you bring it back to base, uh, plant it, and then you can just pick it and eat it for the rest of the game. Kelp is really nice because like for most characters, kelp is not great. It's like nine hunger and negative one health and negative 10 sanity. But Wirt doesn't take the health and sanity penalties. And with her bonus, it's 12 and a half hunger, just eating it raw. So all the other characters are like, you know, picking things and putting them in the crock pot and cooking them on the fire and drying them and all these things and for wort it's just like pick kelp eat kelp and that's the whole game like don't starve wort doesn't starve she just eats kelp the other thing that people bring up whenever they're talking about the benefits to wort's hunger is the rock fruits because whenever somebody new is playing wort and they're like okay how do i manage this downside the response that i see a lot in the don't starve together discord at least is people just say oh well just go get rock fruit because rock fruit is incredibly good for wort it's like a carrot, but with the 33% increase on top of just, you have an easy way to mine all of it whenever you want. Because Merbs can mine all of the rock fruit that you need. You just need to hit it with your pickaxe once. Then all the Merbs are just going to congregate on that one thing. Say, okay, I'll mine all of this out for you. Yeah, it's really nice. And, it, you know, it used to be that you had to, like, pick up all the stone fruit immediately because otherwise some of the merms were going to, you know, skim a little off the top. But they changed that. So, I mean, you still should pick it up immediately because it spoils faster on the ground and it only lasts, I think, a day or two as it is. Um, but, yeah, it's really easy. You just get a bunch of stone fruit. And if you have bundling wrap, then you can bundle it and it'll last you a really long time. The big thing about Wirt is that 
she's really good for teams is something that I realized because a lot of the times if you have like let's say one kitchen everybody's gonna get hungry at around the same time depending on how much food they prepare before. and you know there's gonna be a line at the crock pot full of people that people that need to cook like their pierogi and meatballs <laughs> I don't use the crock pot uh, I did a couple of boss runs recently where just to prove that I don't use a crock pot, I literally did not build one throughout the entire boss run. Um, and there's only actually two times in the entire game that I miss it. Uh, one is after Bee Queen, and because I want to make jelly beans, of course, and the other is when I'm doing Pearl and I want to make her a flower salad. Uh, but there's actually a workaround for these things too, because the game actually starts with a crock pot already in the archives sitting there waiting for you. So uh, if I really, really want a crock pot, there is one already, but I don't have to build one, and I don't ever. Otherwise, I don't miss it. I just sit at base and pick kelp and eat kelp. Yeah, Wirt does not need a crock pot in this game. She could get by. Does not need a pot. Yeah, she she could get by perfectly well by just downing most nothing but kelp and like a few other things. When it comes to her sanity, though, she has quite a bit at her disposal for uh, for sanity. This is one of my absolute favorite Wirt perks, which is that she can read books. And it's absolutely adorable. If you've never seen the animation, you should play Wirt just and spawn in a book just for the animation. But yeah, so Wickerbottom makes books and Wirt can read them, not for the effects of the book, but it gets her sanity. Birds of the World is my favorite because it gives you 50 sanity each time and you just use eggs, which are easy to get, especially as Wirt because she's not eating meat. But it's really, really nice. It gets you 50 sanity and you can just carry it around with you. In the same way that like late game, um, you might walk around with like jelly beans or healing salve. WX as, as a non well with, uh, gears or gears, right? As just like a non-perishable source of hunger. Uh, but there's not really a lot of like non-perishable instant sources of sanity. But Wirt does have that because she has books, and so she can just use it whenever she wants. Or like in the middle of Toadstool, if she starts to go insane and doesn't want to fight nightmare creatures, she can just sit down in the middle of the fight. And read a little book. We can't talk about Wirt insanity management without bringing up the incredible perk of just being able to have fish. So Wirt gets 3.33 sanity a minute having a fish in her inventory. And that also includes Starsky, uh, the thing that summons Hutch in the cave. Similar to the, the books, you know, Starsky doesn't spoil, so you can just carry that around with you. Uh, on the flip side of it, Something that I've been doing a little bit in my worlds is I've just been holding like, dead fish whenever I need to farm nightmare fuel. Uh, because, you know, you go through the swamp, merms die, and their fish is just kind of sitting there. You can just pick that up, hold on to it for a while, then your sanity will end up dipping down. Which is really good for things like moonstorms, or once again, if you're farming nightmare creatures. Yeah, I don't usually have a problem with farming. I don't know, I feel like I'm insane enough as it is that I don't need to do that. And then eventually I do a shadow farm, so I get enough nightmare fuel and dark swords, so it's not... Not not super useful for me, but it is a thing. And there's also the uh, the sea wreath. Yep. Yeah, the which... recently uh, recent update sea wreath. What what was what were the numbers behind that? What are the what's the deal with that one? I believe it's two for the sea wreath and two for the flower garland. It used to be that Wirt was the same as everybody else; that she got positive uh, sanity from the garland and negative sanity from the sea wreath, and now it's flipped. Um, and it's something that I kind of like it because you know. As we were saying before, I tend to want to increase my sanity, although I know Excel likes to decrease it. Um, and so if I were going to wear one of these two items on my head, Sea Wreath is easier to get because Kelp is easier to renew. But again, two sanity is not really, like you can use a fish for three. It doesn't take me too long to get a Tam, which is way better anyway. Also the Sea Wreath needs a skin. Sea Wreath really does need a skin. I've never, I've never played with it as much as I have recently now that they made the change, but now that they made the change, I notice how badly it needs a skin. I feel like Sea Wreath is also uh, just a cheap alternative to like any hats because, you know, if you're Wirt, you're naturally going to want to get a bunch of kelp. And, you know, if you already have the kelp to begin with and maybe you're, maybe you hand the, uh, the single tan that you get from the one Mac Tusk in your world to Wirtox, who's constantly going insane, or the, uh, the Weber, who's at 100 max sanity. And uh, just having like an alternative to turning your food into uh, into a hat that you could wear for passive sanity on top of the fish, really nice. Uh, going on to the health management, I think this is where a lot of people kind of struggle when it comes to managing work because for 
most other characters, it's like, oh yeah, I'll just eat a bunch of pierogi, be fine. But if you're Wirt, then it's like, oh well, I don't have access to pierogi anymore. So what do I do about that? Yeah, I would say the best, if you want to get your health out of the crockpot, the best recipe is trail mix, which is just uh, two berries and a birch nut and whatever. It could be a stick. And that's I... accessible pretty early game. Yeah, I personally prefer butter muffins now because for a long while, I forget butter muffins are a thing that exists. And somebody pointed it out to me that, oh yeah, where can eat those? So whenever I need health early game, if I already went to Lunar, I could just grab a bunch of kelp, stuff it in a crock pot, and add like two butterfly wing, and then I get 20 health from that. Yeah, butter muffins are nice too. Trail mix is 30, butter muffins are 20, but they're probably easier to get. Another thing you can do, and this is sort of specific to the way I play, where I just base in the swamp and I build a bunch of merm houses all over the swamp, which are near mosquito ponds. Eventually, you just get a giant pileup of mosquito sacks, which heal you for eight. And so it's kind of annoying, but you can just walk by and pick up a bunch of mosquito sacks and heal yourself eight by eight by eight. And uh, if you're not like in the middle of a fight, it's not a bad way to heal. But in terms of health, you can always go back to Old Reliable, which, like many things, can be solved with mushrooms, because mushrooms cover most every stat. For hunger, you could always default to just stuffing a bunch of red caps in a crock pot and get ratatouille. Blue mushrooms are good for health, but, you know, minus 10 sanity, which you can once again solve with green mushroom. When they're cooked over a fire, you get about 15 sanity. And if you set up drying racks in your world, then because Wirt naturally wants a lot of kelp, you start drying kelp and get 10 sanity from that. Moving on to, to season, which is, I think, where Wirt thrives. This is easily my number one favorite part of playing Wirt, is that she's just immune to seasons. There are a whole bunch of perks, like a whole bunch of little perks that go into this, but the number one is the sunfish, which a lot of people don't know about sunfish, but if you go fishing in the summer in the swell ocean, there is a little fish that spawns that looks like a little sun. And if you catch it and you put it in your pocket, then it keeps you warm. And it fish in your pocket only lasts for a day, but if you're wort, you get four times that. And so you can just keep a fish in your pocket for four days and it won't spoil and you can just stay warm. And then when it does start to go bad, you just pop it in a tin fishing bin, refresh the freshness up to 100%. And if you've got a couple fish in there, you can change it out, get a new fish while the one fish is recharging. And you just have an easy way of not freezing. They're like, Thermal stones, but better in every conceivable way. Other than getting them. You do have to be a little careful because if you die or for whatever reason drop your fish, it can set everything around it on fire. So uh, every time I, if I'm holding a fish and I die, I immediately shout to whoever is around me like, go pick up my fish, go pick up my fish. Yeah, I immediately haunt the fish if <laughs> I'm in a position where I die just to get it away from my stuff because the fish naturally catches things on fire because it's so hot. So, you know, I just I just need it away from the things that it could set on fire. Yeah, but it's, it's just the fact that it's like four days instead of a thermal stone, which is, I don't know, feels like maybe half a day or something like that, depending on how charged up you can get it. But like the fact that it's just four days means I can just wander around the world doing whatever, gathering stuff or fighting stuff and just not have to think about like setting a tree on fire, or losing health to any of that because I'm fine. And so it just turns winter into autumn, basically. Like I have a fish in my pocket. Every four days, I have to go back to base and like change out my fish, but I'm going to go back to base every four days anyway. And so it's it, that's not a problem. It's just a matter of keeping your fish fresh and then you just get a second autumn. Yeah, then there's also the summer alternative for that, which admittedly, I do use less. I'm pretty sure you use them less. The ice greens are really, really good for specifically worlds that don't really have smoldering. The freezing thermal stone equivalent of the sunfish. So for me personally, because a lot of worlds don't really have smoldering disabled by default, because there isn't really a easy way to handle that without just living in the caves in the first place, or basing in the oasis where you're more or less going to be locked down to one location, there isn't a lot of opportunity for the ice breams to be as useful as sunfish in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree with that. Basically the problem with summer is not the temperature, the problem with summer is that all my stuff is going to catch on fire. So I just go down to the caves and I can avoid all of that. And I like going into the caves anyway, because there's like stuff that I have to, like I have to go to the ruins at some point. So I may as well go there in the summer when I don't want to be in the surface and I can just avoid everything. And so ice breams are really useful if you're going to, I mean, ice breams are 
nice if you're gonna be on the surface in the summer doing things and you don't mind catching things on fire. They're nice if you're basing in the oasis because things are not gonna catch on fire if you're in the oasis. But also if I'm confined to the oasis, then there's not much I can do anyway. And you can just use like the thermal and a refrigerator strategy. And that's not too bad because I'm staying at base and so there's always a refrigerator right there. But it is nice to have the option. Then yes. moving on to uh, the spring, which for the most part, I'll let, I'll let you cover this part, Katom, because I know I have pretty strong feelings about spring in that I hate it. I think it's awful. I think you can say more positives about work in spring than I can in a more eloquent manner. Spring is just free. Like, <laughs> you don't, all of the stuff, any problem that you have in spring, Wirt just doesn't have that problem. I mean, the, the big one is she doesn't lose sanity to wetness or to wet items. So like most characters are gonna spend their entire spring just fighting nightmare creatures because you're just insane all the time unless you like give up one of your equip slots or more than one equip slot. But Wirt doesn't have to deal with that because she doesn't mind being wet. She also has a tight grip, so her tools aren't gonna slip out of her hand. So when everybody else is like, I don't know, chopping trees or mining stuff, which Wirt doesn't have to do that anyway because she has minions to do it for her, but it's not gonna fall out of her hands. Her weapon's not gonna fall out of her hands. She just holds on to everything. And with Moose Goose, you know, doubly things fall out of your hands and that's just not a problem for Wirt with the recent update. The only thing she potentially has a problem with is uh, that you can get a little bit cold she can get a little chilly from being wet. Uh, but as previously discussed, you just stick a fish down your pants and you're fine. And yeah, and you just have to like watch your fish a little more closely because the fish do rot a little faster in spring than in winter because A, in winter things rot less slowly to begin with. There's like a 25% spoilage slowdown in winter. And also in spring, everything is just wet. And so for some reason, fish spoil faster when wet. Um, but one of the things they did buff recently is that they made frogs be neutral to her, because, which makes sense, because Wirt is a frog, but it's a big deal because it means that frog rain doesn't bother her anymore. Like, she can just keep working through frog rain while everybody else is running around trying to find a moose goose or turn into a moose themselves or whatever, run to the caves. Like, Wirt just stands there in the middle of the frogs and keeps doing her thing. We could actually share that perk now with the clever disguise, with the funny face, she could just give it to other players and then they can ignore frogs just the same as she can. And they actually increase the spoilage time. Now it's like, what was it, 15 days? It is such a good option for spring now that you could just hand one to, out to each person that comes into the server that's already in the server. And by and large, they're not gonna have to worry about frog rain. Yeah, but basically what all of this amounts to between the sunfish and all of the spring perks is that like the seasons for work are autumn, 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 and caves. Yeah, the one thing we wanted to talk about when we're, while we're on the topic of wet things is boats and boats sinking specifically. Because for most characters, if they are on a sinking boat, then they drown, they lose 25% uh, of their max health they get fully wet, they lose half their items, just a random half of their items and whatever they're holding in their hand slot. And it's unfortunate. It's really a pain to have to go through that. And Wirt doesn't have to deal with any of that. If she is on a sinking boat, then she'll just spawn at the nearest land with everything, with all her stuff, including what's in all of her equip slots. She's at only 50% wetness, which again, she doesn't really bother her. It makes her 15 degrees colder, but whatever. And it's, she doesn't lose any of her max health. Something that is a little more niche about Wirt in regards to like what her perks are is her mob interaction. Because the big one is that merms and pigs are at war, meaning that pigs are going to target merms whenever they see them. And that's reflected in the game by the pigs actually having a higher priority when it comes to targeting merms. So if you or Weber or Wartox are, you know, all in a group, you're going through the pig village, then the pigs will actually prioritize going after you. So it makes it really good for being able to like draw aggro away from even other monster characters. Just because all the pigs say, ah, well, I see a merm. I got to go after the merm. It also sets up for pretty interesting farms like some of my Winona ones. Which granted, you can do the same thing with the Clever Disguise or with a spider hat. Where it just has that. She just has that built into her. So whenever you want to get pig aggro, then you can get pig aggro. 
my play style does not really make this a uh, advantage. This is just, this is like a minor annoyance, let's say. So if I want to do pigs, what I do is I just gather a bunch of merms and I kill all the pigs and then I smash their houses and then I make a pig farm somewhere that's kind of away from base and I have to be careful to do it in the evening so that they're not out and aggroing on me. And then I just only go there at the full moon. It's a really niche thing because I imagine a lot of people don't manipulate aggro, let's say, to the same extent that I do. Yeah, there's definitely a couple times in this discussion that your Winona true colors are coming out. <laughs> I mean, Word is definitely nice and she definitely has uses for other people on the team. And uh, I'm glad that I'm glad that Winona can, sees the value of uh, Word. Ideally, everybody would see the value of Word, but some people yeah. just say she's better, better and or worse, whatever. Yeah, followed. when people say that, I think it's a little bit insane to say that she's just like, oh, she's Weber, but she's got merms instead of spiders. Because I, of, I, I mean, we've I, talked I, about so much stuff here, and we've barely, like, we talked about merms a little bit at the beginning, but we haven't even talked about using merms for fighting. Yeah, merms are so good. They are, they are really good, but they aren't the entire character. Word herself is really good, and she doesn't even need the merms to be as good as she is. They definitely yeah. help. Yeah, and speaking of mob interaction, one thing that I really like is bunnies, because... Bunnies, like, I really like killing Bee Queen with bunnies. I'm um, sorry, Winona, but that that is the best way to do it. And it's really easy for Wirt because, well, it's it's easier for Wirt than it is for Weber and Wartok, certainly, because uh, bunnies will aggro onto them and they don't aggro onto Wirt. But arguably, bunnies are easiest for Wirt over any other character because Wirt tends to not carry around meat the way that other characters do. And so it's actually really easy to just set up, like, a million bunnies at Bee Queen. Yeah, Woe betide the Wigford that happens to walk through two or three rabbit villages, as opposed to the one wirt that just has a bunch of kelp in her pocket and is skipping down the street merrily. Going on to bosses, right? Because because you mentioned like using merms for combat. Our experiences with merms and bosses have they they haven't been the best, let's say. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I would say that I don't tend to fight bosses with merms for the same reason that when I'm not wort, I don't tend to fight bosses with pigs. There's always some mechanic with the boss that either makes it so that the mobs aren't effective or maybe the hard part of the fight isn't the DPS. Like with Malbatross, like you could bring pigs, I guess, but you still have to draw the aggro of Malbatross. Like at most, they are a temporary damage increase, and at worst, they are just in the way of you dealing your damage. The biggest exception to everything that I just said is Bee Queen, because you can use Warrior Merms to kill Bee Queen, and it, it has advantages over bunnies in that Warrior Merms don't get scared, and so in the later phases, they just keep attacking, whereas the bunnies are like alternating between running around and then biting and then running around and then biting, whereas Merms just keep punching. Unfortunately, both of those methods do suffer from the Huge downside, which is that they aren't catapults, which are, in fact, the best method, by the way. Yeah, I would say that, uh, that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can use her for other bots. Like, you can use it for, like, Moose Goose, Antlion, Dragonfly, if you wall off the pits. Um, but, like, a lot of bosses have AoE, and then Merms are just gonna die, or they have some other mechanic, like, you know, Fuel Weaver gets 0%, uh, yeah, 0% damage, and, like, I don't know, there's other stuff you have to deal with. For Dragonfly, I know that you brought up that you have to actually pen in the lava. You can't just use the wall method and you can't use like the box method. The thing is that like Work is also just really good at fighting bosses herself because we talked about her being tanky before. You know, I know you like her being tanky because you make Merm King, uh, but and I like it because I've got marble. For the most part, Work is fine in combat. The Merms at most are just a sacrifice for a small amount of damage. So they're ultimately not very worth it when it comes to most major bosses that people want to kill. But I guess they are a option for some fights. And then there's the uh, the things that Katome doesn't want to hear in regards to what you can do with Merms. So Merms are an amazing source of fish and frog legs. Because oh. Merm Civil Wars can just mass produce fish and meats for other characters. Orly really wants to murder all the merms because he can make fish court on blue. Yeah, he's just trying to eat my people so that he can gain our powers. Cruel. It's cruel is what I will say. <laughs> Here's the thing, Exo. I am the I am a little merm. I am the future of mermkind. 
and it is not productive to my society to be causing civil wars. What kind of a society are we if we're just fighting? Making a mother of all omelets here, Jack. Can't spread over every day. Unfortunately, both of those methods do suffer from the huge downside, which is that they aren't catapults, which are, in fact, the best method, by the way. Yeah, I would say that uh, that uses gems and using bunnies or using bunnies. I mean, if you get enough bunnies, then all you have to do every time you want to kill Bee Queen is just hammer her. And that's the literally the only resource you spend. I'm cutting that part With out of the video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm cutting that part that part's not making it to the final cut <laughs> okay <laughs> i'll just okay then then i'll just react with a mm-hmm <laughs> <laughs>